A very good morning and a warm welcome to one and all present over here. Thank you so much for all the participants, uh, participants to join on a Sunday morning like this. And this particular session and the webinar is going to talk about the emerging trends in computer science curriculum as the key subject. Uh, I would be focusing around the research that the country has done, um, India as a country that has done over the period of time, the way the computer science education got evolved. And this particular webinar is completely free as of now. And uh, this is going to provide a 360 degree understanding of what are the other aspects of computer science that's that's actually incorporated in the school, but we don't look at them as computer science. For example, robotics, if I talk about drone technology uh, or 3D modeling and printing. So the moment we get into the makerspace as aspects of uh, creating something, programming and coding is always involved. And with uh, the uh, advent of technology, there has been massive changes, especially post pandemic, the policies have got the refined, uh, emphasizing the importance on skill subjects, uh, encouraging and promoting computer science subjects like digital literacy, uh, computational thinking and design thinking. Uh, government also talks about uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, coding and all. So all of these things, what the country has done, what we are doing, how should a computer science curriculum should actually ideally look like, what are the other nations doing with respect to computer science? What are certain frameworks and standards that can be fo followed right now rather than spending time on uh, time and energy on creating something new right now? So we will be looking into all these aspects in, in a systematic manner. I hope everyone has joined and many people are yet, like joining parallelly. So let me quickly start with an activity and I would like to welcome all the principals, school leaders, teachers. Uh, thank you so much for joining on a Sunday morning. I'll make sure that the next one hour how much ever we are discussing is worth your time and and uh, you will be definitely able to implement few of the things that we are going to speak right now in the session itself. Uh, thank you so much, Aradha ma'am. Thank you so much, Sabita ma'am, Varsha ma'am, uh, Kishan, Mamta, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining. Let's let's quickly get on to the first activity that I wanted to plan. So uh, this particular activity has created a sensation among uh, the internet. I, I should say that among the tech giants, a uh, lot of people have been talking about uh, computers replacing human beings. And there are a few schools where already robots are taking some classes. And this particular aspect of whatever we are going to see is going to definitely replace a lot of repetitive tasks. I think everyone would have already known about what I'm talking about. It's it's exactly, Aruna ma'am, you're right. It's chat GPT. Let me share my screen and talk about it a little bit. Let's, let's play around with it for some time and then we'll get on to our core subject. So chat GPT, this is how it looks like. It's a platform created by open AI organization. And right now, I'll repeat it right now, they have made it available at free of cost. Over the period of time, I'm, I'm definitely sure such an amazing tool cannot be free. So right now it's not even complete. It's just the beta version and, and people are already liking it to a large extent. The accuracy and the way the computer understands you right now, I think even a family member cannot understand you to that extent. Say, for example, let's begin with, uh, uh, hey, good morning. I mean, this is, this is just a very simple thing and... Uh, Let's see. Good morning. How can I assist you today? So that's how the conversation begins. So one important aspect of chat GPT is, or any AI module for that matter is, it should be able to remember the context of uh, whatever we are speaking. I shouldn't be repeating the same question. For example, uh, let's, let's go with uh, a context over here. Could you please uh, give me a brief, you know, BR, a brief understanding on uh world war one uh for in about see look at the specificity i'm going 100 words and the moment i do that uh, do this uh, uh, the chat gpt starts responding with uh, you know that particular aspect of the topic and uh, it'll talk to us for some time but what's really interesting is uh the moment we get on to this uh could you speak more could you uh tell me more is what i'm going to talk like put that as a chat now when i say could you tell me more chat gpt or the ai module over here remembers what i asked before now which is not possible in in a programmed uh software or something like that so this is ai coming into picture 
so the ideally whenever i talk about machine learning or ai it is the ability of that particular model to talk to you remembering the things and that is how on the left side you can see that whenever i talk about a particular uh, aspect of uh, any questionnaire with chat gpt it all remembers and and based on the remembrance it it keeps responding to your your queries over the period of time this becomes so acquainted with whatever you are asking uh, it can be definitely more than a friend now how can i use this in the school now this is really interesting for example uh, could you please uh, give now i don't have to go for could you please at all but i'm just trying to be nice to my ai i do not know but yeah could you please give me a lesson plan on a uh, total internal reflection to teach students of grade 8 in about say 30 minutes now the moment i type this you will be surprised to see that you will get the exact lesson plan for 30 minutes with the objective with the materials that are required how you can give an introduction along with the timing for that and all the details i'm not really sure if the teachers who are attending this workshop have actually exploited this you really need to exploit this to maximum extent to know how the things are getting generated now this generation that's happening behind uh it's not repetitive again suppose if i say that uh, uh i like this but could you add little more creativity to it that's it so no 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 it like absolutely here's an updated lesson plan and and it comes with more creativity so when you get into the details one by one you will you will find this to be like the right partner for all your solution and and i think many of you would have already tried this and and if i go further if i go further like we are all computer teachers over here uh, i want to ask about say uh, let you can stop generating at any time but uh, i want you know i want to respect the efforts that the so software is taking right now let let it get completed like conclusion and let's go over here and they are even talking about the assessment which was not at all part of the lesson plan i mean i did not even think about it the moment i you know ask it to create a lesson plan the assessment component came and as a teacher i remember oh my god yes a lesson plan should include assessment i hope you're getting the connect so could you uh, give me a c program to generate uh say fibonacci series our favorite program during our school days and college days up to n numbers i mean i'm just randomly giving one program and the beauty is i've given could you give me a c program and and look at the response over here okay so here's a simple c program i get the complete code present out there uh i think uh, this is the next level you know response you will be surprised that this is not limited only to this extent it also goes to the explanation part of it and and the best part is suppose if i repeat the same question uh, like could you please repeat the same on scratch platform now a uh, a uh, they give you the scratch program so open scratch and create a new project now scratch is a programming so software which is related to drag and drop mechanism you just have to drag and drop and i can generate and they have given proper algorithm to it with proper instructions on how to do it in fact if you ask it to give the code of scratch even that's possible let's let's try that as well let's try that as well okay they have even given the link from where you can get this uh, uh could you give the code directly see i'm not even repeating the instruction it's it's just that's great so when flag clicked and it, it is giving me the complete set all i have to do is just uh, uh you know look into it carefully and copy the exact thing on scratch and we are there we're good to go i hope everybody got the point uh, i'm stopping the screen share now this particular um aspect of uh, artificial intelligence coming into picture and taking over our task so some of uh yes uh, sunita ma'am you are absolutely right uh, there are countries that have actually banned chat gpt a uh, bit scary too <laughs> and dependent yeah it it is students are saying they will not be able to judge the learning you are absolutely right so uh when we talk about the fear aspects the everything that you are talking about you are absolutely right and and uh, it automatically gives us uh a space 
where we can discuss on the need of or or the requirement of a change in the way we are looking at computer science or any subject so back in those days the moment internet came into existence uh people were really worried that we get all the information in hand just like that the knowledge that a person used to possess in his brains uh became not so of a certain value and use because internet had come into picture but that area of easy availability of knowledge led to uh, the creativity aspects and new job creation and that's how it industry flourished now with respect to the advent of ai uh with all the fear with all the repercussions that you are all thinking about i think uh, the way we look at computer science will definitely change and should change now if i talk about chat gpt or if i talk to students about computer science the the beautiful part is the children know about it and they they really explore this to a large ex larger extent than us but when you open the textbook of a grade 3 or a grade 4 student especially computer science you'll be able to see a chapter that talks about how to bold a particular letter how to use italics as an option maybe how to underline left alignment right alignment i think these are not of any use after this uh to be very frank for a student uh, they don't really need to spend grade 3 grade 4 grade 5 in learning microsoft word they don't really have to spend time on um you know microsoft excel for you know in grade 6 more about excel in grade 7 let's let's you know advanced excel in grade 8 no not required any more uh already this has been emphasized in various curriculas across the globe which we will be discussing over the period of time but if you talk about why there is a need of change in computer science curriculum i think chat gpt is one very good example that will definitely convince each and every participant right over here to look at computer science more seriously and differently so the whole progress of a nation depends on the computer science subject right now if i say that statement don't you think it's quite true exactly so i have stagnant physics i have stagnant chemistry stagnant biology when i say stagnant the concepts really cannot change i mean i have lungs and the lungs are going to be present all the time forever this is how my digestive system work and that's how the heart beats this cannot change but computer science every day there's a new device coming into existence and the size of computers are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller nowadays i have a chip and that's called as a computer that's what people say and some schools wherever you have you know maker space installed you might have heard about this raspberry pi as one of the computers a very small computer with a small display the point is the change is happening and the change is right now there are few countries that have adopted to this change uh, quite a long time back some of the leading countries are united states united kingdom uh, singapore then israel uh then canada uh of course singapore and malaysia put together uh many middle east nations they have uh, given compulsion to use coding as a curriculum in their uh, regular subject and and coding was never part of our subject at least you know before 5 years very rarely very few publications had that now when i talk about coding and uh, programming as uh, as a key component uh this has been given a maximum importance to even sub sahara countries like you know kenya uganda uh then even uh, you know equator and peru in south america so the point is the importance of computer science is not getting restricted to just usage of technology which is what is current textbooks talking about uh how to use a photoshop tool how to use or make a powerpoint presentation how to use ms office effectively no no uh the the shift is happening right now where how to create a program that can do so and so task how to create a program with which i can play my own game how to create a program that can work uh on a particular device and solve so and so problem it's it's all about the creation aspect and 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 the usage aspect is gradually getting reduced so in order to imbibe the children with this thought process there are various initiatives that even our country has taken since a long time i think from 2014 15 onwards uh, our country has been taking lot of initiatives and i want to highlight some of them whatever i'm speaking it's all there in the websites various websites that i'm going to talk about and these are all government websites let me share my screen and show some of uh, the initiatives taken by government of india and for that i need to share my screen which looks something like this so the first thing that uh, you will be looking into is um yeah 
so NEP 2020, this is the latest, by the way, uh, which talks about uh, uh, the coding and programming aspects. So specifically, it, it's mentioned as digital literacy, coding, and computational thinking. It's just one liner that, that's mentioned over here. I'll be talking about NEP 2020 and coding aspect little in detail because there are places where it, it encourages, government of India encourages coding from an early class. In fact, even from grade one and two. Let's, let's talk about it a little later, but one important initiative uh, that has actually revolutionized the way we look at creating things is Niti Aayog's Atal Tinkering Labs. Uh, Niti Aayog uh, Atal Innovation Mission basically is uh, uh, a flagship initiative uh, in order to promote the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. This is this is their one-liner, and based on that, they came up with multiple ideas. One of the ideas was. Uh, aim to innovate through which they install 10,000 adult tinkering labs across the country. I am very sure out of many participants who are present over here, some of the schools will definitely have this. And you can apply for having adult tinkering labs set up by the government of India in your school. And the application forms will be generally released in the month of March. And you can check the Niti Aayog website, aim.gov.in. You can directly go over there and you can check about the application release. And even if it's not present over there, if you're finding it difficult, you can contact me directly. I'll be able to provide you the right links. You can even join the official Telegram channel. I can give you all this support. Uh, you just have to contact me. I'll put my number on the chat a little later. Out of uh, this particular initiative, uh, massively, we have seen that in the last three years, the students, especially, you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, even during the pandemic, came up with ideas to combat COVID, ideas to solve their community problems. And thanks to all the NGOs that are present in India who are promoting installation of adult tinkering labs and running that in the school through various methodologies. Let me go to the next initiative. This is also quite interesting. Now, this is artificial intelligence curriculum or artificial intelligence inclusion in the curriculum. Now, this was again done in the year 2019 and around 800 schools in India participated in the pilot project where they started using AI tools for their regular subjects, especially in grade eight and nine. In fact, even the lesson plans of how to use them, how to integrate them is present in the CBSE portal as well. Now, when I talk about CBSE, it is just not restricted to CBSE curriculum. Um, it's just that government of India initiatives generally gets released through CBSE because it's a recognized body. That's it. And if you look into the content of uh, AI inclusion in the curriculum, you'll be surprised that they encourage AI to be present in other subjects rather than treating AI as an individual subject. I think I'll, I'll reiterate it. Rather than using AI as an individual subject to be learned, its emphasis is more on usage of AI on other subjects. Now, what, what I mean is I am using English as a language to communicate my thought process to all of us or to all of you. Now, with respect to AI, the, the belief is that if I have a platform or a tool, let us consider that to be technology, that's going to be acting like a platform or a better way of communicating the same thing. So language and computer science, both are not actually individual subjects, though they are treated as individual subjects. Ideally, they are the mode of communicating the core, like it could be science, mode of communicating the culture, which is social studies, mode of communicating mathematics. So it's all about mode of communication. And that's the reason uh, languages and computer science are given so much importance. And yes, I think you feel the importance. Let me go to the next one. Right after uh, artificial intelligence inclusion, this is another nice initiative by Digital India by Sri, Sri Narendra Modi ji, where they launched uh, uh, AI for all program. And look at the beauty. Uh, the vision was everybody in the country should know about AI. Actually, rather than sh should, I think it should be could. So suppose if there is a layman, um, for example, he is an auto rickshaw driver. He has got basic literacy of understanding English. So this particular person, if he has to know about what artificial intelligence is, so they came up with this platform, which is a four to five hour training program. If there, is, there, if there are any teachers out there who would like to get into the, you know, introduction of, uh, you know, AI, this is the right platform for you. And it, it is a four hour course. You just complete it. You, win, you will even earn a badge that you have completed that. This is AI for all, all the citizens. Let me go to the next one. Now, 
then came up with CBSE skilled education, which talks about artificial intelligence. This is a skill subject, a module for grade six, seven, and eight. Uh, they talk about design thinking, information technology, coding, data science. Data science they've given only for class eight as a skill subject. This is another step taken after NEP uh, for uh, the incorporation. I, and, and these books are also gradually getting created and uploaded on CBC portal. We could download that. So these are some of the steps that are taken with respect to Government of India's initiatives uh, in order to uh, inculcate you know, good computer science education across the country. Now, now coming to the point. Now, when I talk about all these things, there are so many things that are happening by Government of India. So many things are... Uh, organized, disorganized, but uh, end of the day, the question by a teacher would be, how do I incorporate this in my regular timetable? Generally, a school allots, generally a school allots two periods in a week for computer science, which would account for approximately 70 to 72 periods in one academic year. Uh, in that, even if I remove 10 periods, 10 to 12 periods, uh, because of vacations and uh, exams and things like that, uh, then we are ended up with 60 periods within 60 periods how am i supposed to incorporate all of these things that's a big question and when we talk about the discussion on how do we incorporate in the timetable there are two aspects to it whenever we want to incorporate that in the timetable the first is the teachers who are going to incorporate that need to get trained there are bodies in the country which uh, act like a catalyst in this training process. I would consider super teacher to be also one of the bodies which like we are conducting regular workshops on Sunday. We are conducting teacher training program. So through these, the teachers are sensitized about the importance the first thing. The second thing is how do I find the right curriculum or right book or the right publication with which I can incorporate all these things in the class. There needs to be some kind of a progression, right? When I talk about um, sun rises in the east and sets in the west in grade one and two, uh, like people are surprised because students are surprised in grade six because the same thing is repeated saying that sun does not rise, it remains in the same place, but the planets revolve around the sun. So there is a proper progression that's established over there. In grade one and two, I should talk this. In grade six and seven, I should talk this. In grade nine and 10, I say that sun does not rise, planet also does not revolve. It's like the whole galaxy moving away somewhere. Big bang theory. So there is a progression that's nicely maintained because we know these are the concepts. But how do we select a computer science curriculum that is getting evolved and changed at such a fast pace every day, every month, every year. So that's where uh, there are some group of people who sit together, who talk about, you know, uh, what should be done and they make documents. Now, when I talk about these people sitting together, they are, they could be a government party. They could be some group of enthusiasts. I can have Naresh, Divya, Asha, Mamta, Prasanna sit together and, you know, they talk about data science. Uh, Dr. Sundaresan or, or Daryani or Anu, Patrick, all sitting together for data science. So just like the way we have national focus groups, NFGs for various subjects, we could have a similar kind of a context for computer science as well. But we don't have to do anything again from the beginning because these are already done. Especially in India, it is in the process of getting created. And that's how you got NEP. That's how you got coding. That's how you're getting the curriculum one by one. But there are nations who have done all these work quite a long time back. So let us try to refer what they have done. Their student persona is going to be completely different from our student persona. Persona is all about uh, the cultural background, uh, the, the traditional education system, the topographical understanding of a particular concept. These are all coming under the categories of student persona. I think you would have heard this word in B.Ed. if I'm not wrong. So when, depending on the requirements of our Indian students or the Indian context, we can get some adaptations and start working towards a better curriculum. Again, I'll repeat the same statement. A publication or a curriculum adopted by the nation determines its progress, especially with computer science subject. So if you are adopting a subject, especially computer science, and, and if you are adopting something which is really mediocre, if that is what is available, we don't have a choice but that actually directly affects the progress of a nation. And whatever I'm speaking, it's just not with my words. These are proper researched materials. Let me show you some of the researched materials, but before showing some of the researched materials, I want to break this flow a little bit by showing one amazing tool. And this particular tool is again, quite interesting, of course. Uh, like I provide everything that's interesting. And this particular tool talks about 
here we go. I'm sharing my screen. And uh, this is how it looks like. So this particular platform, it has got a lot of advertisements, of course, uh, called as Deep AI. Now, when I talk about Deep AI, it's an amazing platform on which you can convert any of your words into a diagram. For example, let me um, see uh, a dog sitting besides a river. The moment I have a statement like this, I can create an image from the text prompt. So I click on generate. Now, the moment I click on generate, it takes time. There is a loading that's happening. Now, for an English teacher or any subject, let me not categorize again into subjects. For any subject teacher, look at this. The beauty is the moment I type something, I get an image output of it. Now, this is not an easy task. A dog sitting beside a river, I'm getting exactly the image. And the image that you're looking at uh, right now is not a picture taken by a photo or a camera. It's generated by artificial intelligence. It just now created this. For example, a dog sitting beside a river uh, near a house. I'm just putting a house as well. Let me Let me go and click on generate. Now, the moment I click on generate, again, there is a... Uh, development that's happening. You can see the development happening right over here. And you will be surprised to see that you will get the exact statements response over here. Okay. Okay. There's no house. I can't see. I, I, anybody's able to see a house? <laughs> no. AI, AI, you're not that great so far. Let me click on generate once more. Let me click on generate once more. I hope if there is a development properly near a house. Come on. If you have not used Deep AI, I would request everybody to use it. It's, it's an amazing tool uh, for you to convert, uh, you know, uh, a statement. OK, that's great. So I've got a river again and it's not detecting a house properly. So let me type home and check it out. I generate again. The multiple times you do, the better the AI gets. And, and this will definitely, you know, work out. I hope this comes properly. I'll wait for a few more seconds. No. See, look at this dog. Uh, it's actually not that great. It is not looking in the proper shape. So this is quite an evident example of, uh, you know, uh, AI making this. Uh, a dog sitting beside a home, or let me say house and a river. Let's try this one last time. I don't want to give up because when I tried before the workshop, it, it really worked very well. That's the reason. So one more attempt and let's see if it works or not. So deep AI, uh, there are many AI tools, by the way. I think if you're watching uh, artificial intelligence videos, oh, finally I've got. So there's a river, okay. There's a house and there are two dogs. AI must be like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll satisfy your requirement and I'll give you a bonus of another dog, something like that. So here we are with respect to deep AI. Now, when, why, why did I show this? I showed this because uh, whenever we look into artificial intelligence, there are two aspects to it. I'll repeat it. Whenever I look into the aspect of artificial intelligence, there are majorly two aspects to it. One is called as the NLP, which everyone might know about. It's called as natural language processing. NLP, natural language processing. The second one is called as computer vision computer vision as a human being we generally remember things with images if i'm remembering aradha ma'am it's because i have visited her multiple times i know how she looks like her grace i remember that uh, but if we talk about uh, natural language processing it's all about uh, the words the communication the language getting converted to thoughts now deep ai is one platform where your nlp is getting you know converted to computer vision your, your statements are getting converted to images. So that's how you know, this attribute was possible only by a human being. You read something on a notebook and you are able to imagine that. Surprisingly, now a computer is able to do that. Yeah, we'll talk about deep learning and all these things a little later. But domains of AI, when you talk about it, there are two major aspects, NLP and uh, computer vision. There is a small third aspect, but the most important, according to me, is called as data. We talk about data and data science. Now, why am I talking about data? I'll show that little later. We'll do some activities as well. But right now, I would like to go ahead showing you the continuity of what we were discussing before. 
So the first thing that I wanted to share is the research materials or the frameworks across the nation. And that looks something like this. Uh, I have to go over here. And here we are. You'll be able to see the screen in a few seconds. Yes. Um, so frameworks across the globe. I, I've just taken a small list of um, uh, you know exclusive frameworks. These are quite renowned. Uh, so the, one of the frameworks that we talk about is Microsoft Class of 2030. Now Microsoft created a, a curriculum five years back, and and they've named it as Microsoft Class of 2030. Look at the viewpoint of the framework. So going through this particular framework, a child should be ready for all the opportunities to be grabbed in the year 2030. So that is how they planned. And this is how it looks like the moment I click on it, it will take you to that particular PDF. So we'll be sharing this uh, for all the people who would like to contact us and we'll be talking to you. Uh, I don't have a methodology to share this right now. So Microsoft class of 30, again, uh, it talks about various aspects and you can go through it. Uh, what are the learning outcomes? Uh, how do you teach this to the students? Uh, what are the research that they have done so far? Uh, and and this is completely you know oriented towards United States and uh, you know I should say United Kingdom as well. These are the major areas where the research actually happened. So I wouldn't really completely agree to a Microsoft Class of 2030, 2030 curriculum for India. Let us go to the next one. Let us go to the next one. The next one here talks about Singapore framework. Now Singapore framework is again quite detailed and very similar to Indian context. Now here they have got O level computing syllabus and look at this. Look at this. They have introduction, content, pedagogy, and assessment. Now here I would like to take a small break and I want to tell you something. Whenever we talk about any education system, whenever we talk about any education system or creation of a particular framework, there are three areas that people generally work on. For example, if I ask Kanmani ma'am right now, Kanmani ma'am right now to uh, create a, a curriculum of computer science for her school. So she's going to have her small team. And the moment you start brainstorming, if at all you're thinking the first thing to be written down is the table of content or the chapters, we are actually getting in the wrong direction. If you're doing that, we are doing that because we are all accustomed to use the chapter as a teacher. But if you ask the same thing to a school leader, they'll not talk about the TOC. They'll not talk about the chapters. They'll talk about what would be my child you know, enabled with? What would be my child equipped with? after the usage of this particular curriculum. So this particular aspect of what would my child be ready with is called as a learning outcomes. When we talk about uh, competency-based education, CBSE first learned, launched the learning outcomes. And based on that particular learning outcome, this is what my child should be ready with. There is teaching learning strategy or pedagogy that is decided. And only after the teaching learning strategy and the pedagogy, what is the content that is decided? So the content plays or takes the last seat when deciding on any refined framework or I should say even education system for that matter. And in order to uh, check if all these learning outcomes are properly imbibed or if uh, like properly taken to the students, we have the assessment coming into picture. So the three areas that I'm talking about is learning outcomes, teaching learning strategies, which could also be considered to be pedagogy, uh, content, and, and to check everything, the fourth aspect is the assessment. And that is exactly will be present in all the frameworks that I'm showing you, even in Singapore, even in uh, Microsoft class of 30 or everything for that matter. So I would request you to please go through Singapore framework as well. Considering the time that we have right now, I'm not really getting into the details of all the frameworks and that might actually confuse you also. So according to this particular framework in Singapore, they're categorizing the whole computer science into three areas of science, computer science, computer for the society and computer as a tool. I'll repeat it. Computer as a science, computer for the society and computer as a tool. Now, when I talk about all these things, what are the tools? Computer hardware, troubleshooting, animation, image editing, spreadsheets. These are all tools, applications and things like that. Society, 21st century competencies, ethical use of internet, right way of uh, usage of different hardware devices, safe and responsible use. Uh, then then science, computer as a science is computational thinking, design thinking. So this is the category that Singapore framework has. The, if you really go through all these framework and categories, uh, you will start feeling that each of these is actually the right way of doing it in my country. Now, the moment I talk about this, uh, some of the school 
leaders might be like, yes, this is what I actually want in my school. But if I show you another document, uh, for example, let me open the OECD framework. OECD is Organization of Economic uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, these were the guys who actually conducted the PISA test and uh, India did not really perform well in that. So based on that, they came up with PISA 2021 ICT framework which they did not have before, but now they have. And here also they talk about all those areas of um, uh, pedagogy, content, and things like that. OECD is also quite famous and uh, majorly used in European nations. Um, if I go to the next one, I've got GSA framework, which is more dominant in American continent. And of course, a few subcontinents as well. Uh, they give importance to STEM education framework rather than treating computer science as just computer science. So here you can see that uh, they have got what are the skills that they will be. So this is the learning outcome, basically. These are the things that my child should be enabled with. Then supporting attributes. What is the STEM mindset, agency and persistence and things like that. Then uh, we have the assessment and all these things. So basically, uh, this is with respect to GSA framework. But uh, let me go to K-12 CSTA framework. Now, this is the most... Um, or else, uh, in fact, if I'm talking about all the other frameworks, somewhere I'm intending to show you Computer Science Teachers Association. Now, CSTA framework is um, a set of people, a community of computer science teachers and leaders, and it is called as Computer Science Teachers Association. It's an amazing standard laid out very nicely for all the children and the teachers. That is really unique with respect to CSTA. So you can see that there are five areas under which they are categorizing the content. Computing systems, networks and the internet, data and analysis, algorithms and programming, and impacts of computing. Let me stop share the screen for a few seconds. Now, when I talk about, when I talk about um, uh, Computer Science Teachers Association, uh, this particular body, this particular body has worked with teachers across the globe. Uh, if Ajay sir would like to be part of Computer Science Teachers Association, you just have to go to the website and become a member. And with membership, you regularly get, uh, you know, a lot of uh, updates on the curriculum that's present in different countries. Uh, you will get a lot of aspects with respect to, um, you know, uh, how should uh, a teacher enable or get trained herself on to incorporate you know, CSTA standards. And, and they came up with standards for students, that is learning standards. They came up with standards for teachers. And even now they are even in the process of making standards for you know, leaders. How should an institute look like for incorporating all these things? So why I'm talking about CSTA to this extent is, CSTA is one standard uh, or standard organization with which we can get inspired to quite a large extent. When I say Singapore framework, it's quite related to, you know, Singapore, Microsoft, very much to the European and American nations, similarly GSA. But when we talk about CSTA, CSTA it's, it's quite inclusive in nature. Now, I, you will be surprised with some of the information. H have you ever uh, used this platform called as code.org? If you have used code.org, then I'm very sure you would have uh, definitely understood the way the programming is introduced over there. I'll show you even in this particular session. And code.org is created by CSTA. Now, I hope you're getting the connect where CSTA has come into picture. CSTA has created a lot of other platforms as well, just like the way Scratch. Scratch as a block-based programming language was introduced or made by MIT, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Code.org was created by Computer Science Teachers Association. And if you are part of, uh, or if you are a member of CSTA, even you get an opportunity to work on such kind of creations. So Brian Twerek is the lead over there. Uh, we happened to speak to him and, and we came uh, across, uh, you know, their thought process of imagining a CSTA as a, you know, world body rather than just a country's body. So with their adoption, what we did is we tried to come up with a comparative study of what CSTA is speaking about computer science and what in India we are doing. And when I came up with this comparison, you will be surprised that India is still at least five to seven years behind uh, the leading countries in technology aspect. Though there is maximum outsourcing of technology resource in our country, people from engineering colleges directly get into an IT company and work. There's a huge, uh, you know, I should say brain drain, but at the same time, that is like right now, I can't really be very patriotic because um, it's like benefiting the country in various ways 
when there is a lot of inclusion of uh, information technology from other nations as well. So keeping that in mind, um, here the utilization of technology is maximum, the resources used use is maximum, but that's not getting reflected in the school education. And now let me show you the comparative study and even you as a leader and a teacher will be surprised with this. So I'm sharing my screen once again. Uh, I'm very sorry, there is a problem with the Zoom because of which my video is getting, I should say I'm becoming zombied or something like that, but I don't know why it's getting repeated, but let me show you the comparative study. And for that, I need to share my screen, which looks something like this. Uh, it's getting loaded. You'll be able to see the screen in a few seconds. Great. I hope everybody is able to see this. Yes, you are able to see this. So report on computer science topic coverage. Okay, and this is prepared by our super teacher team in collaboration with few IITs and government bodies. And uh, let me directly come to the areas. So when I talk about computing systems, according to CST standards, they mean devices, hardware and software troubleshooting. This is something that will be very much relatable by computer science teachers, networks and the internet, network communication and organization, cybersecurity, data and analysis, which is completely related to storage, then visualization and transformation, inference and models. This includes AI as well. So that's how um, CSTA looks at algorithms and programming. You know about this is something that's happening for quite some time in India. Impacts of computing, which is more oriented towards digital citizenship of culture, social interaction, safety laws and ethics. Let me come down and show you the comparison. That's great. Here you are. So the first thing that I would like to address is grade one and two. When we talk about grade one and two, uh, look at the CSTA. They recommend um, the major part of 44.4% to algorithms and programming. Now, when you look into the other publications that are present in India, we don't even start algorithms and programming at that particular age, class one and two. Even now, there are many schools who would still say that, I don't think so my children are ready for algorithm and programming, at least in grade one and two. You're absolutely right. You might be a partially correct. The point here is, uh, when we talk about country and when we talk about the children's mindset, it, it, it is directly related to the confidence of a teacher as well. For example, if a teacher is saying that algorithms and programming is not really you know, applicable for grade one and two, maybe because that teacher never got an exposure to conduct algorithms and programming at that particular age category. But if there are right platforms, but if there are right experiences, if there are right tools and resources to talk to class one and two, this can definitely be done. So hence, it is important for a teacher or a teacher training bodies to do a research on what are the tools and resources that are available for class one and two to incorporate algorithm and programming. Now, just because CSTA is doing a 44.4% doesn't mean even India has to do 44.4%. At least 25 to 30%. That is what I'm looking at. And look at the domination over here. CSTA talks about uh, computing systems, which is more oriented towards MS Paint, a little bit of hardware and software. We they, they just speak about that only for 17% of maximum. But here our content is dominated with 62% of that. I'm very sure most of the leaders and teachers out here might feel that I don't need to have a separate chapter on keyboard. I don't need to have a separate chapter on mouse. I think gone are the days. The students, they know if I lift a mouse and show them, yeah, this is called as a mouse. This is more than sufficient. We don't really have to get into the details of how does a mouse work? Or what are the three buttons in that? How to use the left click? How to use the right click? No, not required. Let us go to the next one. When I go to grade three and six, uh, this is again grade three to six, a huge category. Again, if you look into it, there is a uniform distribution. 43.5% given to algorithms and programming. Now, other publications in India have started giving importance to the same. And you can see that nearly 22% of the content for grade three to six in India uh, is allotted to algorithms and programming. Again, we have given a lot of importance to computing system, 35.2% and here 13% only. And the best part is with respect to impacts of computing, which is all about how to behave online, how, how to... Uh, uh, send a mail, how to create passwords. These are really important at this particular age category because after this, the children are directly getting exposed to internet. And we talk about how to 
uh, restrict the access to the children rather than restricting the access if i teach the children on how not to use internet especially in the age category of grade 3 to 6 they listen to you better than these restrictive access and more the restriction more is the curiosity of a children to explore that area and look at our indian system we have got hardly 2% uh, importance given to those chapters of digital citizenship. Three to six, a very sensitive area. We really need to change this completely. Uh, let me go to next area. And this is again another surprising factor. Grade seven and eight. Now, when you look into uh, uh, CSTA standards, they've given importance to algorithm and programming again for 44%, which is uniform throughout. But in other publications, that is in India right now, we are suddenly giving 60% important. All of a sudden, when a programming language like JavaScript or HTML or Python is introduced in grade six, there's a huge, there's a huge shift in mindset that's required and children are not ready for that. Uh, just imagine this was not even present till eighth standard to quite a large time. Directly in grade 9 and 10, students start getting exposed to AI tools, uh, Python programming, C, C++. Many students did not even opt for computer science because of the complexity involved in it at that particular age category. If I had talk, like spoken about all these things a little early, the children would have been there at a better control of all these things. So that is the reason I find classes 7 and 8 uh, with respect to Indian uh, publications. Um, you know, giving so much importance at 60%. Now, whatever I'm speaking about, all these research uh, has come up with uh, uh, an elaborate work of nearly eight to 10 months only on making the comparison. So we compared various publications, a publication which starts with the letter K, a publication which starts with the letter O, a publication which starts with the letter R. I'm not supposed to name them and that's the reason I'm indicating it. Uh, when we compared and we found that majority of the schools in India, we considered around 1,500 to 2,000 schools uh, during our event, Seesaw event last year. We did this survey and we were surprised to see that it is getting this industry, this area is getting dominated. There are schools who have come up with very good idea of, I don't want the books for computer science. Let me create my own content, which is very relevant. I think this particular workshop is is going to give you a lot of insights on what are the areas or which are the places from where I can get insights on to develop my own curriculum. That's a very good thing. And I'm also would like to, um, you know, proud and I'm, 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 I would also like to highlight the factor that me as a super teacher organization with multiple team uh, team members, basically with, with multiple areas of expertise, we came up with our own areas of uh, exploration and research and we came up with our own curriculum as well. We find our curriculum to be the best in, in the world. I can, I can be really confident about it. And I can come up with multiple comparative studies as well. And in order for the school out there to uh, have any comparative study of your curriculum with, with the current scenario, please look at us. Please, uh, please, uh, sorry, please contact us. I'll be able to provide you a detailed report of uh, what you are using and what should be there. There might be a lot of chances that whatever you are using, 80% is matching with whatever should be there. Then let's not even change your curriculum. Let's let's continue with the same. If you are making your own curriculum, then definitely you can contact me and I'll be talking about all these things. I'll be sharing an inquiry form after some time. Please fill the inquiry form with your feedback about the workshop and your requirements. I'll definitely be able to share all these information one by one. Now we are almost at the last part of the session. And for this, I would like to uh, show you some of the tools that is appropriate for certain age category. Uh, I have made a rough spreadsheet on the same, which uh, let me open that and share it with you over here. Uh, I would try to share this with all the schools, but that's definitely not possible for everyone. Uh, everybody like who is uh, contacting us for them, definitely I'll be able to share because I'll have direct access. Here we are. And uh, this particular sheet, yeah. Let me share my screen. Is it shared? No. Yes, Umang ma'am, we do that. Kalyani ma'am, we can do a training program on that as well. For example, I'll show you some of the activities right now. Here we are. So uh, I would like to show you some of the platforms. Uh, as a school leader, you'll be able to judge. As a teacher, you'll be able to understand uh, how much applicable this is for your respective age category students. The moment I get into code.org, as I was speaking about it because CSTA had created this, uh, this particular website has got amazing uh, predetermined courses. Uh, lesson plans are already existing. Apart from that, it also has 
uh, 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 the open space to create anything you want. For example, let me click on Sprite Lab or Artist Lab or App Lab. Let me click on App Lab. I'll be able to explain you. Uh, if I uh, if I mention a point that uh, I cannot teach application development for grade three and four, most of you would agree with this point. Uh, but actually, when you look into this particular platform, which is all about uh, you know code.org. And, and all you have to do is just drag and drop. For example, if a child would like to make an app, app in which it, they have got a button over there. So basically a simple alarm clock kind of a thing. So the moment they press this button, they can set the alarm. Something like, you know, there's a canvas over here. There's a, there's a slider, for example, to control the brightness or, you know, I, I, I want to have multiple sliders. I just have to drag and drop whatever I want. And once I've done that, I need to go to the code on the left corner, left top corner, and I just just need to drag and drop these things. Now, when I drag and drop these things, I can attach it one below the other. And the best part is I can even have text, text visualization over here. I can again click on blocks and I can click on text. So this particular platform, code.org, enables a teacher to talk to a grade three students about application development. Hence, it was not the possibility of app development in grade six and seven. It is a possibility of uh, the it is the possibility of the presence of a particular platform with which I can teach the same thing to a particular grade student. So uh, if at all somebody says that this is not applicable for grade three and four in computer science, that means that particular person has not explored internet sufficiently enough to know about these platforms. And the best uh, part of code.org is that uh, this is completely free of cost. Of course, uh, there are a lot of aspects to it. You're not supposed to, like you can become a member of it. There is a paid version as well, but it's not required. All you have to do is just get onto code.org and start doing all these activities. If your book has code.org publications, may you are really lucky you're using a very good book. Let me go further. Let me go further. So I can actually you know, do anything I want. Make a cat at the top. I, I just, uh, I'm just showing you one aspect of it. And I run... So the moment I do this, there'll be a sound. Not about you, can't drink with so it's a simple activity. I just make a new cat come at the top. Then I can have multiple dances, lay out all as a grid, something like that. Let me see what happens. I can't write, I can't write one song. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'm sorry because of the sound. But yeah, this is how it works. Quite interesting. I would request everybody to explore code.org. Apart from code.org, we have got this nice platform called as quickdraw.withgoogle.com. And I also would like to show you Google Teachable Machine. I think some of you might know about it. Now, when I talk about uh, Quick Draw, it's, it's a machine learning tool. If you have attended my previous workshops, uh, you would have seen this uh, multiple times. So basically, uh, uh, the computer tries to ask us to draw something. So draw onion in under 20 seconds. Let me try to draw... I see nose. Okay, it's guessing. Or elbow. Come. Oh, I know. It's onion. Post the pandemic, the least I can do is draw onion better. Uh, draw mountain in under 20 seconds. So let me draw mountain. Oh, I know. It's mountain. Quite simple. So draw shrub in under 20 seconds. Okay, now this is. I see feather. Okay. Or matches. I don't know how to draw shrub. Or campfire. Or leaf. Come on. I see rhinoceros. Okay, it says rhinoceros. Or submarine. <laughs> Or dragon. This is this this is definitely not or the mistake crab. of computer. This is my I see incompetence garden. to draw or a shrub properly. Cake. Sorry. It was not I couldn't guess it. That's okay, no problem. Draw kangaroo in under 20 seconds. Okay, let's try to draw kangaroo in under 20 seconds. Okay, come on. You I see nose. Okay. I see toilet. Uh, toilet. Or arrow. <laughs> or nail. Or crayon. Okay. Or giraffe. I see parrot. Come on. Or bird. Oh, oh I know. It's, can it's kangaroo. It was able to guess that in the last moment. Draw dragon in under 20 seconds. Okay. Why all? I see line. Okay. Or bench. Okay. Or garden hose. Or arrow. I'm, I'm not even drawing. I it. see flashlight. Or shovel. Or shrimp. Sh or dolphin. Oh, I know. It's dragon. It was able to guess dragon in the last moment. That's great. I'm lucky. Draw bottle cap in under 20 seconds. Okay. I see line. Or knee. Or wishbone. Oh, I know. 
it's bottle cap lucky okay so it's done now what's really interesting is if i talk to children uh, in grade 3 saying what is artificial intelligence i can do this activity and i can click on data the moment i click on data you will be able to see all the drawings drawn by the people across the globe everything so you've got over 50 million drawings present over here and and say for example i click on ice cream so the moment i click on ice cream we will be able to see all the ice cream you know that's that's present out there everything drawn by the people across so 1 lakh 19837 ice cream that are present out there this is again a free platform you can use this to talk about just like the way a teacher uses multiple examples to teach the children on a particular concept a computer requires multiple examples to learn if a student is learning it's called as human learning with the examples if a computer is learning it is called as a machine learning that's it i don't have to really get into the details by the time the child is coming to grade 6 or 7 they'll be very able very easily able to understand the concepts of ai and machine learning because the mindset is already instilled in grade 3 itself through quick draw i hope everybody got the point i would request everybody to use this platform you also have google teachable machine again it's an open source there are a lot of open source platforms i would like to show some of them you can you can even take a screenshot of the same now google teachable machine is all about uh creating some differences so for example the computer trying to identify few things that that's a metal music that's a non metal music uh that's a wings and that's a tree something like that uh so you'll be able to see the difference between the claps and all all you have to do is just click on get started the moment you click on get started you can create an audio project post project or an image project i can click on standard image project and uh, say for example class 1 that's me and uh, that's my dai i click on the webcam and uh, i just have to you know look at the webcam i smile okay that's me i've given some recordings uh, 16 image samples diary keli i just have to you know show my diary like this and uh, that's done i train the model now there are some children like yesterday uh, today national coding olympiad junior uh, award function is there winners are going to be declared in fact uh, right after some time you can actually check super teacher official channel for the live youtube uh, um, session that's going to happen many children have come up with an amazing idea of creating machine learning models one child has done a very nice thing only when you smile in front of the classroom the door will open otherwise the door will be closed so it's like be happy and come to the class something like that it's a very simple mechanism they used arduino board and they used google teachable machine so with google teachable machine you can do anything and everything you can create a machine learning ai model and transfer that particular program to a physical object and you can make a project to solve a problem so this is with respect to google teachable machine let us see how it works you will be able to see that in few seconds i think some of you might already know about it yeah so here we are so here in this case um i hope yeah so that's me and that's my diary that's me and that's my diary you can see the uh, you know representation over here so that's me and let us bring both and there is a confusion can you see that yeah so more the samples better is the output that is with respect to google teachable machine so these are some of the platforms that i wanted to talk about so you can actually look into this i hope you are able to see this block coding for grade 1 and 2 code.org is something that you can use or scratch junior you can use for grade 3 to 6 again code.org you have got multiple platforms express course play lab artist lab you can use scratch from grade 3 to 8 onwards please do not be under an impression that uh, block based coding is not actually for uh, Uh, you know higher class students no not at all it, like the complexity increases it's quite scalable make code by microsoft cbse tied up with microsoft to conduct national coding challenge in fact they even made a curriculum for grade 6 7 8 make code uh, you can actually check the website cbse website itself you have got something called as edu blogs for python html and javascript uh, you have got google collaborator trinket for python uh, there is something called as mit app inventor uh, for app development tankable is also for app development uh then ai experiments by google whatever you saw quick draw uh google teachable machine these are for ai so this particular categorization is something that i wanted to show you D digital citizenship and data science can be uh, learned from commonsense.org even that's an amazing platform now coming to the last part of the session uh, please don't mistake me that i did not show everything i would request everyone to please contact us uh, uh i would be able to sh like uh, share uh, the uh, inquiry form right after this and uh, you can contact us for all such information again now coming to the last point of our discussion uh 
this is with respect to the computer science curriculum that we have now super teacher has been working on this particular model this particular research for a long time and in collaboration with various government bodies including iit bhubaneswar iit hyderabad uh, we came up with a very good curriculum in in case if anybody is interested who has not selected the curriculum so far for the upcoming academic year you can please contact us that's the first point or else you can if you want only the coding program to be implemented with the usage of current books even that could be done all you have to do is you just have to contact us and i'll be able to give you the complete curriculum for now just to give you a gist about the same let me share the curriculum map and and the book which would look something like this i hope everybody is able to see this if you want you can even take a screenshot of it no problem with that and uh, great come on that's great so this is getting loaded yeah so this is how the curriculum map looks like so we have categorized the whole content into foundation discovery and expedition we believe that computer science is looked into multiple dimensions especially in india of course we have the five core areas under which the chapter can be developed just like the way csta mentioned about digital literacy digital citizenship programming then we have data science and artificial intelligence then we have the coding aspect of it which is called as the cs discovery application of all these concepts leads to web development app development game development uh it is not that app development web development and game development is uh, appropriate only for you know a certain age categories no if we find the right platform everything can be applicable for every grade now how to do that, that this is just the framework i'll talk about that in a detailed demonstration if you require you can contact us cs expedition is all about a uh, transfer of that particular program to uh, a physical object like robots drones and 3d models wherein you can you can you can create your own project and and we can set up a lab or we can give an individual robotics kit for the schools whatever you want so basically with respect to my framework there are three categories from grade 1 to 12 foundation talking on the concepts application of that leads to coding development of a program a uh, web development app development that getting transferred to a physical object is is the drone robotics and 3d model uh, so if at all anybody would like to know a detailed table of uh, content i would like to show you that right now with this particular document and you can take a screenshot if you want or else contact us and i'll be able to explain all of them in a detailed manner and this is how it looks like yeah i'm sharing my screen once more I'm not able to look at the chat uh, uh, because of screen sharing multiple times teachers. I'll definitely go through each and every comment and uh, the message and I'll get back to you. So for grade three, I have the chapters of, uh, you know, the areas of five areas where the chapters are getting developed, digital literacy, programming, AI, data science, and digital citizenship. And under these, I have the chapters of mother tongue of a computer, ABC of coding. So I'm giving maximum importance to programming, just like the way CSTA standards talked about importance of algorithms and programming at an early age. From grade three onwards, I'm beginning this. I'm also having a component of AI, data science, and digital citizenship in all the grades. That's grade three, and this is grade four. You'll see that in grade three, I'm touching Microsoft paint your thoughts. One chapter is definitely there. Not that it is completely removed. Digital literacy, I'm talking about MS Word present only in grade four. I'm not really getting into the details of, uh, you know, um, uh, the word to a large extent for all the grades. No, only one grade. Then I go to the next one where I talk about uh, enter and Excel, Microsoft Excel on, on digital literacy for grade five. If you look, there are chapters like Choco bars versus spice, which is all about bar graph and pie chart representation. Uh, we have a chapter on copycats and copyrights for digital citizenship. So in this way, my chapter progresses for grades from three to eight onwards. I'll be not able to show the complete uh, the content. Uh, if anybody is interested, please contact us. I'll be able to give a detailed demonstration of the same. Every chapter begins with a very good context about why they are learning. Uh, so the end of the day, the need or the requirement of a particular chapter needs to be established for the students. And that particular uh, uh, context will run through the whole chapter. Something like, uh, let me show you one of the context. So ABC of coding, we talk about today, we want to eat tasty food. We simply use apps like Swiggy Zomato. Or if you want to travel from one place to another, we use Ola and Uber. How does all these things work? How does all these things happen? Let's explore. So here I'm talking about ABC of coding. That's how the chapter gets evolved. 
the whole chapter with multiple screenshots uh, is made in such a way that it's a competency based which is catering directly to competencies of students the assessments are competency based assessment as well because we've been conducting cbe workshops across schools and many school leaders are present out there right now who have already attended those so we have incorporated all those things in our computer curriculum as well so this particular session for the sake of this particular session uh, i just wanted to show you these and uh, let me sh okay okay i'm so sorry okay now you will be able to see this yeah i thought you were able to see this but i had not shared the screen yeah my mistake i'm very sorry let me show you the toc once more this is how toc looks like so i go to grade sorry sabita ma'am thanks for bringing it up and this is how it looks like so for example grade 3 so we have given importance to digital literacy, programming, AI, data science, and digital citizenship. You can see that just like the way CSTA standards has mentioned, we are giving maximum importance to algorithms and programming in earlier years. Of course, we are giving the same importance across the years, but we are also gradually increasing the importance at digital literacy, citizenship, and data science as well. I was mentioning about Choco Bars versus Spice over here for grade four in data science. When we go to grade uh, five, again, we have uh, digital citizenship, which talks about copycats and copyrights, uh, flowing thoughts and rhythm with make code, Microsoft curriculum, because CBC has tied up with this. And these are some of the chapters. I think some of you might have the sample books. Uh, if not, please contact us. I'm having the chapters of augmented and virtual reality beyond the reality. Uh, we talk about doodling and animation in digital literacy as well. Many children at the age of seven, sorry, grade seven and eight have started their own YouTube channel. And I have chapters on re-edit your favorite movie trailer. Understanding Google Smart Home, organize your thoughts with mind map. So Python is getting introduced in grade six because they have studied a little bit of programming in grade three, four, five. So this is how the chapters run. And uh, every chapter begins with a context. Um, the context that I was talking about, say, for example, here. So when I talk about costliest bug, so in 1962, uh, NASA actually made a spacecraft called as Marina 1 uh, for the planet Venus. But unfortunately, the satellite did not reach the orbit now why it did not reach because there was an error in the program how big the error was how expensive this was let us learn about errors and troubleshooting in this particular chapter so every chapter will have qr codes the links all those things so whatever i'm talking about right now i'm not really getting into the details of the chapter because i would like to do it personally with all the leaders and the teachers and for the people who are really interested in this so I would like to, uh, so this particular uh, uh, webinar was more oriented towards uh, emerging trends in computer science curriculum. If anybody would like to go through this complete webinar once more, this is getting live streamed on YouTube. You can access this at any point of time. Secondly, if anybody's interested to have uh, the access to a personal interaction, you can, you can actually have an appointment with me and we can work on it so let me share my contact detail right away on the chat uh i'm just disabling the chat for a few seconds uh and these books are for grade three to eight for the current academic year uh yukti ma'am and uh, i've given the number i would also like to give you the uh qr code and the inquiry form over here with sharing the same great yeah i've done that and uh, i'm going to share my screen in a few seconds great so i go over here and everybody can take a photo of this particular qr code for filling up the inquiry form that's great i hope everybody's able to see this yeah you can scan the qr code i'll also be sharing the link of the inquiry form after a few seconds so you can scan the qr code for any kind of inquiry uh, you can give your feedback as well for this particular session i would use this form for giving back the certificates as well for attending this webinar Great. Uh, teachers, now let me look at your chat and I'm enabling the chat. Uh, I've given my number over there and I'll be pasting it multiple times. 
so yukti ma'am i think yeah arpita ma'am you can see this video on youtube and i can give you the link separately as well uh, please share your details on the inquiry form uh, contact number i have given thank you so much samita ma'am and uh, great uh we have teacher training program which can be accounted for your continuous professional development as well okay great so this is the qr code now uh, can we get training on yes of course ai data science and block coding we can definitely do the training uh, i'll be conducting a lot of training programs we've been recently associated with many schools for training uh, we could do that a virtual session can happen even tomorrow i'm i'm just saying you know we are very open to that so that's it from my side let me share the link of the inquiry form the qr code is sufficient enough but still uh, i would like to share you share with you the link as well and for that i need to go over here great i hope everybody got the link on the chat it looks something like this please save the link and uh, you can contact us oh bhavna ma'am i'm so sorry for that i can speak to you again little later yeah so thank you so much teachers and school leaders it was great interacting with one and all um i hope everybody benefited out of the session and i'm extremely sorry for overshooting it for nearly 15 minutes uh, i hope i did not disturb your sunday to quite an extent uh, but yeah you can access this complete video on youtube as well and we can have personalized interaction as much as required please contact me and you can fill up the enquiry form uh, for the same uh sangeeta ma'am uh, yes i'll do that i'll do that uh you can pl please message me on on my phone um i'll give my number as well uh and i'll i'll be able to do that thank you so much for participating teachers and school leaders it was great interacting with one and all i'm looking forward for more such workshops every sunday we keep conducting one or the other things and you'll receive a mail or a message on the same and uh, please get benefited out of it people generally say that if anything is provided at free of cost it is not valued no i don't believe in that i i believe that if something is given free of cost maybe majority do not value it but even a little part of the audience value it and go back and look into it i think my uh, agenda of this particular meeting is done um commercialization of education is happening to a large extent which is which is actually good the value is getting established but at the same time minimum requirement of a particular need uh, should be satisfied with such kind of workshops that is our motive from the company point of view as well uh, we have done the research if you want personalized attention please uh, contact us i'll be there thank you so much all the teachers it was great interacting with one and all i'll be stopping the meeting in another 5 minutes and till that uh, if you have any questions you can put it on the chat i'll be uh, putting the link and my phone number on the chat so we can interact further if there is any school school leader who did not select your computer science curriculum for the current academic year or uh, please contact us we can do the coding program as well i'll i'll be able to install it yeah thank you so much sujata ma'am thank you pallab kumar yeah divya ma'am please uh, send us your details your school details and uh, if you can share your contact with my if you can message me i'll i'll, I'll get it done i'll i'll share it with you avantika ma'am thank you so much swapna ma'am thank you thank you so much uh priyanka ma'am this particular form that's coming is is considered to be my uh attendance form you can you can actually the form is coming on the chat yeah okay i am great uh i have done that ma'am so we want to finalize our connection great uh urushi ma'am uh, requesting you to please contact us aradha ma'am thank you so much thank you so much aradhna ma'am means a lot aradhna ma'am is a uh, uh, one of the eminent school leaders in the area of maharashtra uh, she has uh, got a great value with her school icon public school and uh, we've been with that in touch with her for various workshops and seminars and she has always been there thank you so much aradhna ma'am means a lot uh, to put your comment over here means a lot thank you so much thank you so much yeah yes sunita ma'am i'll be able to do that i'll be definitely able to do that uh, i request your contact please message me contact us i'll be able to share the details thank you neeta ma'am trisha ma'am thank you so much meenka gupta ma'am thank you so much nisha ma'am thank you so much requesting everybody to go through the documents i'll i'll be able to share them 
Sonali ma'am, thank you so much. Means a lot. Thank you so much, Sonali ma'am. Uh, yes, Swapna ma'am, I need to know your details. If you can, you know, just fill up the enquiry form, I'll be able to do that. Thank you, uh, Mr. C. Puralia. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Thank you. Okay, I'll. Okay, Swapna ma'am, I'll contact you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Oh, uh, Vinita ma'am, Gayatri ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Parag ma'am, thank you so much. Dr. Parag Agarwal is also from the same location, uh, from, you know, Army School, MIRC. Thank you so much, Dr. Parag, means a lot. Shobhi ma'am, Sunita ma'am, Arpita ma'am, thank you so much. Sunita ma'am, I got it. I'll do that. I'm, I'm pasting uh, the link once more on the chat. You can get my number and the details. Sure, Dipti ma'am, looking forward to. Ruby ma'am, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dhanlakshmi ma'am. Great. Sure, Sabita ma'am, I'll do that. I'll do that. I've saved the chat. I'll definitely do that. That's great. That's great. So uh, yes, Manjri ma'am, we can definitely do that. Uh, we can definitely do that, ma'am. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll share it. You just have to give me the number. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ruby ma'am. Done. I'm, I'm going to close the session. We have to host further sessions. Thank you so much, teachers. Means a lot. I'll, I'll meet you all in further sessions. Thank you. Namaste. Urushi ma'am, I will do that. Uh, please contact us. Evert, uh, I can definitely do that, Evert. Uh, if you can send me uh, your contact details, I'll be able to do that. I'm, I'm sharing the same over here on the chat. Uh, Kishan sir, I'm, I'm sharing the YouTube link as well. Done. Urushi ma'am, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Uh, requesting you to please contact us. Thank you, Sunena, ma'am. 